Thank you. <laughs> Wendy, you can't do it now. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm you made me take off your sunglasses. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna get into it really quickly. <laughs> what do you say she did it first? It's okay. Um, this is a translation of uh, the Yeats poem, The Second Coming. <laughs> Looking good. Jesus Christ. Semicolon. <laughs> Semicolon. <laughs> Semicolon. <laughs> Comma. <laughs> Comma. <laughs> Semicolon. <laughs> Comma. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Comma. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Semicolon. <laughs> Colon. <laughs> Comma. <laughs> Comma. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Comma. Oh <my> Comma. <laughs> Comma. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Comma. <laughs> Comma. <laughs> Comma. <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> This is uh, an email my mother sent me. <laughs> Dear Evan, I'm a little confused by what you do for a living. <laughs> to be honest, I'm actually confused about all the ways you're living. You say you're a poet, but you use it as an excuse to eat dessert, stare at couples in restaurants, speed down highways, steal surfboards off of walls and bars. This confuses me about poetry and about art, and mainly about you. <laughs> I wonder to what extent you will go through art to provide meaning in your life and others. I guess what I'm trying to say is congratulations on publishing a few of your poems in a few journals. <laughs> but I have no idea what they mean. <laughs> your poems look like the new river after it rains. It looks like your father when he tries to remember his Apple ID. <laughs> I want you to know that I'm proud of you, but I have a problem with it. I'm glad you're doing it, though. It seems to make sense and have some sort of merit, even if it isn't literary. I love you and miss you, Mom. Discovery Channel, which I'm obsessed with now. It's called Venom Hunters. It's about these people who catch poisonous snakes and they use their venom for like research and cancer and, and medical. So this poem is called March 2nd, 2016. Amen snakes. Right now I'm watching Venom Hunters on Discovery Channel. I just got home and pretty stoned. Two guys are hunting diamondback rattlesnakes. They have to catch three to get paid. They hunt in groups of two. They're always, there's always one guy who is confident and one guy who's cautious. They're almost always guys. When they spot a snake, the other one hollers, for example, Josh! Snake! <laughs> They're almost always southern. In order to catch the snake, from what I've seen, you have to slide a coat hanger looking stick under the belly and lift up. The other person must hold a brown sack open with their bare hands. Sometimes the snake strikes, 
always misses. But when it hisses and boils up, my arms go stiff and I hold my breath. I have to tell myself nothing bad happens on TV. I get anxious. It just happened again. I stopped writing to watch, of course. <laughs> So, um, do you guys remember whenever we had a um, tornado warning and they canceled class and nothing happened? Yeah. So I wrote a poem that day. Um, so something happened. Um, it's called February 24th, 2016. And this poem is for my roommate Jamie. He's not here. He's sick. These are his cowboy boots. Woo! There's a tornado warning today. It's sunny outside right now, and a little windy. We knew this was coming. The news is on now, muted. It looks like the thunderstorm should be here in two hours. A newscaster says, standing on Carolina Beach. Jokingly, Jamie said earlier, enjoy your last day on Earth, <laughs> this morning before he went to work. So everything I'm doing now seems to carry more weight. <laughs> I thought today might be the last day I ever take a shower, brush my teeth, watch the prices rise. <laughs> I'll look twice before I pull out on the highway. I'll watch the trees sway along. I'll go eat Thai food before I start a, long, a load of laundry, just in case I live to teach tomorrow. <laughs> Jay said that if the tornado does come, and we do hear it, then we should get in the bathtub and, covers our, and cover ourselves with the mattress. That's what his grandmother told him to do. I'm kind of scared this actually might be my last day alive. I wonder what I'll do, I'll do after I die, even if that isn't today. Still, I don't want to rot in the ground. I need to believe in something bright, like the transvestite toenails I saw at the bar. Yeah! I, just have, I just have a few more. Um, no more punctuation poems. Um, this poem is called Daydream. <clears throat> I want to write a poem about real life that doesn't involve wind, wild animals, <laughs> guns, mountains, or anything I've ever seen. <laughs> I want this to be an anti-intelligent poem. In this poem, a number of things will happen. A dog will get hit by a car. The car will not stop. The lights of the neighbor's house will not come on. The driver will make it home safely as if nothing happened, as if nothing actually happened. Maybe the driver didn't know anything did happen. The moon cannot be seen. I want people to read this poem and hear the poem, or wait, I want people who read this poem or hear this poem to not have anything to say about it. I want them to read the poem again. I want this poem to be published in my book of collected poems after I die. I want this poem to be taught at Ivy League University. Yeah. I want my poem to read this poem and cry. I want my father to read this poem and be proud. I want my friends to read this poem and think, I'm drunk. I want my friends to read this poem and say, that's why I never wanted to marry him and cheated on him with his friends. I want this poem to be pretty long. I want this poem to be a sonnet. I want this poem to be engra engraved in a statue of a famous person that is not myself. I want people in California to read this poem during an earthquake. I want this poem to make me fold my laundry. I want this poem to go on and on and on. I don't want this poem to be a sonnet anymore. Yeah. So, um, how, how am I on time? Keep going. I don't have that many. Um, I don't know what I want to read. Um, I'm going to read one more. One more poem. This poem is called Narrative. Have you guys ever, like, when the price is right, whenever they, like, place their bids, they, like, put their mouth really close to them? <laughs> Two dollars. Or one dollar. One dollar. One ninety-nine! What was the previous bid? <laughs> okay, this poem is called Narrative. This poem has no pronouns. <clears throat> Today, woke up, went on a run, cold outside, put on leggings. While running today, tripped in a mud puddle. Rain last night, neighbor's newspaper soggy. Neighbor never picks up newspaper. Four of them piled up. After running today, went to the coffee shop, saw books of dead people on the walls. Some are not dead yet. Most are, or some way, on their way to be. 
Today, thought about being dead over a chai latte at the bookstore. We saw two people to avoid instead of talk to. Today, got hungry and went to get Thai food below the house next to the nail place the girlfriend used to go while visiting. Lady was nice, but the credit card was declined. Lady gave the food to be nice today. After eating the day, read a line by Calvino about traveling, but forgot to bookmark it. Something about memory, today thought, maybe about desire. Today thought about new socks because they were still wet from the run. Thank you. Woo!